Good morning, everyone. Um, today, we're filming this a little earlier, uh, but for Sunday, it's called Pentecost Sunday. Uh, no more, so many masses after Easter. And Father should be wearing red, celebration of color. And we'll get into that, why he will wear red. And in our gospel right now, in our timeline, um, Jesus' disciples, are in Jerusalem. Okay, they're all meeting in Jerusalem. And you always wonder, well, they could have been any place, but why Jerusalem? And there's a reason for that, okay? Um, it's called, if I pronounce it correctly, um, Shobaat. Shobaat. And that's Yiddish. And I, for my Jewish friends out there, very sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly. According to the Jewish religion, Three times a year, the Israelites were commanded by God to ascend to Jerusalem and observe his appointed times. The feasts of the Lord were to be observed and celebrated just as God commanded. Each feast would have significance regarding the plan of God for the salvation of mankind and to establish the kingdom of God on earth. So, where does Pentecost come into this? Okay. Three times a year, only the males would appear in in certain place, almost like a mountainish type of place. And there's fields here where they grow wheat. Um, there's the feast of the unleavened bread, like pita bread that you could eat, and that would be like Passover. And then the feast of weeks, and that would be Pentecost. And then you had the feast of booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. So every man shall give as he is able, whether it is... A lot of times they said they'd have bread and they'd be waving it in the air and, and honoring God. And so those, the Feast of the Booths is about the tabernacles. Okay, These feasts of the Lord mark the year of the Jewish people. Okay, So where does Pentecost come in? Well, Pentecost is known as the Feast of the Week. Okay, and from Shoba what to Pentecost, in Greek, that word means Pentecost, and pent is 50. So, what we have in the Jewish faith is 50 days after Pentecost, it would be Shoba what. Okay, in our religion, the Christian religion, the seventh Sunday, which was last week, um, after Easter is 49 days, plus on um, Easter, um, Pentecost is your 50th day. Okay, so that's how we get to Pentecost, long and around. And in, it's known as the birth of the church. Now, everyone's excited at Christmas time because of the birth of our um, Savior Jesus Christ. But on Pentecost, it becomes the birth of the church. And I'll get into that after our readings. Okay, everyone ready? So the first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were to gather in one place. Suddenly, it was a noise from heaven like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where the disciples were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions. And a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone. And they began speaking whatever language the Spirit let them speak. Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem. And when they heard this noise, a crowd gathered. But they were surprised because they were hearing everything in their own language. They were excited and amazed and said, don't all these who are speaking come from Galilee? Then why do we each hear them speaking our very own languages? Some of us are from Medea, Elba, Mesopotamia, Judea, Asia, Egypt, Libya, Arabia, Rome, Crete. Some of us were born Jews and others of us have chosen to be Jews. Yet we all hear them using our own languages. 
to tell the wonderful thing God has done, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay? So your response is hallelujah. So when I point to you, say hallelujah. I praise you, Lord God, with all my heart. You are glorious and majestic. Our Lord, by your wisdom, you made so many things. The whole earth is covered with your living creatures. Hallelujah. You created all of them by your spirit, and you give new life to the earth. Our oh Lord, we pray that your glory will last forever and that you will be pleased with what you have done. Hallelujah. Now the second reading is from a reading from the first letter of Paul. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but they all come from the same spirit. There are different ways to serve the same Lord, and we can each do different things. Yet the same God works in all of us and helps us in everything we do. The Spirit has given each of us a special way of serving others. The body of Christ has many different parts, just as any other body does. Some of us are Jews, and some of us are Gentiles. Some of us are slaves, and some of us are free. But God's Spirit baptized each of us and made us part of the body of Christ. Now we each drink from that same Spirit, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, alleluia, alleluia. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, alleluia. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God bless our thoughts, our words, and our feelings. The disciples were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And on the evening of that same Sunday, they locked themselves in a room. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the middle of the group. He greeted them and showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they became very, very happy. After Jesus had greeted them again, he said, I am sending you, just as the Father has sent me. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, they will be forgiven. But if you don't forgive their sins, they will not be forgiven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So giving the history in the beginning, that's why the apostles, the disciples, locked themselves in the room. The Jewish people were not really sure of the Gentiles. Okay? They were not really sure about Jesus and his followers. But all of this changed when a mighty wind comes through. Uh, how would you feel if all of a sudden you're in a room, no windows open, remember they're all shut and locked, and all of a sudden you see little tongues of fire above you? Um, I don't know about you, but I think I would be a little nervous. I'd be panicking at that time. But then, they were filled with this, this goodness, this light, okay, which became the Holy Spirit. It, the wind was very powerful. The flames normally, sometimes people would thought, you know, little doves or something, but um, the wind and fire appeared without warning inside the room, which they were huddled together. They already felt afraid. Instead of hiding away in fear, they couldn't wait to rush out once they were blessed and everything and they had the Holy Spirit. They couldn't wait to go out. And that's why the Jewish people from all around the world who met for that feast day um, and for their religion couldn't believe that these people, these men from Galilee, and they had their own dialect, are speaking languages from around the world. What miracle is this? And they were, couldn't wait. The disciples couldn't wait to go out. And that's how our church was founded. Blessed by the Holy Spirit and made his disciple want to go. So they didn't stay right in Jerusalem where they didn't just go back to Galilee. They spread themselves around the world. Now remember, there were no cars or trains or planes, so they would have to walk, and they would have followers. Now, 
was it easy for the disciples to go out and preach the word of God through their revelation with the Holy Spirit? No. Were they accepted? No. Some of them did not um, fare well, but they got the word out there. Okay. And we receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, when do you think we receive the Holy Spirit? You know? You turn to your parents and ask them. The first time you receive the Holy Spirit is at your baptism. Okay? And, um, and again, at your confirmation. So the Holy Spirit is with us. God created Jesus to come to earth, spread his word. Then he left. But he didn't stay away. The Holy Spirit took over. And when you're in a sporting event and they said it, Get the Spirit, get out there and do the best you can. Same thing. The Holy Spirit gives you that power to preach what Jesus wants us to know. Okay. And the one thing I want to say is that the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom, the gift of understanding and knowledge, and there's seven of them, the gift of counsel, right judgment, the gift of fortitude, which corresponds to courage, the gift, fear of the Lord, gift of hope, okay, and the gift of justice. And in today's world, we need a lot of that. So we have the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and there's other ones also. Um, the wonderful event began the birth of the Christian church more than 2,000 years ago. The Holy Spirit touches our lives and fills it with his gift in a very special way. He also fills us with his life in different ways at different times of our lives through the seven sacraments of the church. So even though we're very excited at Christmas time, we're excited at Easter time or when Jesus rose from the dead, but on Pentecost, this begins the, um, the birth of the church. Okay? So before I close, I want to pray. So if you close your eyes, as I say, these intercessions. As brothers and sisters in one loving family, together let us pray to our Heavenly Father. We pray for all of God's people, that through baptism the Holy Spirit will help us to act and think like children of God. We pray for the sick and all who suffer, that the Holy Spirit will bring them healing and peace. We pray for all who have died, that they will rise to the new and everlasting life promised through their baptism in Christ. We pray for the family together here today, that God will pour out his spirit to strengthen us. Knowing that our Heavenly Father is listening in the silence of our hearts, let us share our own unspoken prayers with him. Loving God, make your spirit living inside us, fill us with love, forgiveness, understanding, helping us to become more like Christ, your Son. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Boys and girls, have a great weekend and hopefully a happy one. Mm -hmm.